great Adam Schefter joins us. Shefty, good morning. How are you today? Andrew, John, and happy week one. All right. I'm finally, glad you said finally. that. Um, John and Connor were looking at me like I was taking crazy pills, which I may have been. I'm not 100% sure. I yeah. am ecstatic for tomorrow and for this NFL season, not just the Eagles, this NFL season. Is there something like you get it every single year. You're excited every single year. I'm excited every single year. But I have, like, more excitement for this season, and I'm trying to figure out what it is. I was disappointed a little bit in the product last year, despite the writing still being great, and I think it's going to be better this season. Do you have any sort of feeling about your own personal excitement for the 2024 NFL season? You know, I just think it's always high. I, I, I don't know that I can compare it one year to the next. It feels like for you, Andrew, that it's the most exciting only because it's this year, and I, I I would think that you may have said the same thing last year, and you will probably say the same thing next year. Probably. I just think that every year you get excited this time. Like, we got the Thursday night opener, then you got Friday night, your Eagles in Brazil. I got my fancy football draft tonight. Do not disturb during my draft. Like, <laughs> I get fired up for that every year. And so there's just a certain routine to it. You know, the kids are going back to school. The weather is as nice as it gets right now. It couldn't be any more perfect. You got football that's going to be filling up the next four or five months on the weekends. So it is exciting. It's fun. There's a lot to look forward to. It's a part of our lives, really, is what it is. And so we're getting back to that part of our lives, which is what I think we, many of us, not all of us, but many of us look forward to. Three of the Eagles' biggest names. Brown, Smith, and then, uh, of course, Darius Slay speaking out, saying they're not thrilled to be going to Brazil. Yeah. Well, uh, do you understand it? And more importantly, did you see yeah. Darius Slay offered a, a an apology last night? I can't believe he apologized. I didn't see any lies detected in anything he said. Well, my guess is, and I don't know this at all, but my guess is, like, the league is going there and Brazil is hosting – the Packers and Eagles, and Brazil, I'm sure, is going to be rolling out the red carpet and trying to do as good a job as they can, and they don't want anybody criticizing them. Like, even after that initial Darius Slay video ran, I had Russell Okun, the former offensive lineman in the NFL. I don't know why he felt personal about this, but he did. He's like, hey, man, I've been to Brazil a bunch, and it's beautiful there. People have no idea. Now, the fact of the matter is, it's not a vacation anyway. What does it matter if you're going to Brazil or Jacksonville, or I'll, LA, I'm gonna, I'll tell you. Tennessee. I'll tell you why. Because before, why. But I, before, yeah, but before the Eagles go to Jacksonville and Tennessee, they don't have to have an NFL security briefing telling them to stay in their hotel rooms and it's not safe. That's the well, difference, what? Adam. That's the difference. They're being brought to a place where they're being told you you're not safe to walk the streets. Well, guess what? They're not going to be walking the streets. They're going to be. This this is a business trip, the same way that any road trip is a business trip. You know what? Get on the plane for 10 hours, watch some movies, take a nap, rest up, and get ready for your opener Friday night. Like, who, what? Yeah, by the way, you, you want to walk the streets of Brazil? Go back next spring. Okay, I'm going to right, I'm gonna ask you this. When the, when the Eagles or any other team goes over to England, do they not walk the streets? Do they not take in the local culture? Is that not part of a trip overseas for NFL teams? Isn't that supposed to be part of it? Different trips bring different experiences. Why? When, because it's when not a safe to, environment, Adam. Come on. When, 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 they go to, when they go to Brazil, when they go to England, most of these teams, most, not all, they wind up going for five, six days. This is a two-day trip. This is in and out. And why is it's that? Well, because it's week because one. It's, well, and it's, it's, also week, not, it's week one. And it's also not what place that they want to go for five days. Okay, fine. By the way, like the story I told is ESPN would have these games in Mexico City on Monday nights. I don't look kind of security. It's the only time that I have, like, you know, security taking me in and out of the stadium, <laughs> taking me to cars. Exactly. And, and, and what was freak, freaky about that was, when I was in Mexico City, security walked me to the car, and somehow I lost security. And there were a bunch of driver, drivers in cars, and all of a sudden, some guy goes, hotel, and I go, yeah. And I get in, and, I, and, and, and three minutes later, I'm like, oh, my, what did I just do? What did I just got? What did I? And I start texting the production coordinators, and my heart was racing, and I was panicking. 
And I'm like, oh, my God, I got kidnapped. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's the oh truth. It's a scary thought. Yeah, but you know what? Like you said, they're, they're going out for a business trip. They're going out to hopefully win week one. Now, I want to ask you this, Shefty. I understand why they try to you know spread to international waters and you know they want to spread the popularity of the league the one thing that bothers me is that yeah. this is a big game eagles packers you you had the gm of the packers on your podcast and he's thrilled yeah. that they're not playing at lincoln financial field yes she is could yep. this be something down the road where they go ah, next time it'll be eagles and uh giants and not eagles packers when it has some meaning to the nfc uh, well, I think they're not going to make the Eagles give up another home game anytime soon, if that's what you mean. To well, not, not, not the game. Eagles. I'm saying in general, you know, the next time there's an international schedule that comes out for next season, right. are they going to make it a marquee matchup like this where there's legitimate playoff, you know, conference standings or divisional standings where home field advantage does matter in that specific game? Do you think that could change or would they rather send out two better teams for the betterment of the product so that they can uh, grab more, you know, more of an audience internationally? I think this is done on a year-to-year basis, but I will just say this. I believe the league is determined to grow the game internationally. And whatever it takes to raise the profile of the NFL in places like Brazil and London and Germany and every other place they play, I think those places, it will not surprise me if they get more and more marquee matchups because one of the league's priorities is to grow the game internationally. So if that is the case, you're not giving them the Arizona Cardinals versus the Jacksonville Jaguars, for lack of better thought. Two smaller markets that don't have Oh, we're, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll we're, we're losing we'll Shefty. We'll we're gonna put we're gonna put Adam on hold, and, and Connor's gonna try to clear up that line. I mean, that's my biggest thing. I get why they're doing it. Uh, not that I think they necessarily have to. I but understand why they're doing be it. There. But but to what Adam was saying, maybe that is the reason why it's this game out there because they would rather put the best product out there. All right, we got Shefty back. Good Sorry bit. about that, Adam. Yeah, no, I don't know where you lost, but that is what I think they're doing. And, again, I'm not trying to pick on teams like the Jaguars or Cardinals, but their history and tradition is not as long and storied as the Eagles and Packers. And so right. I don't think it's accidental that the league gives two marquee teams in two marquee markets to Brazil. Like, that would not be what Eagles fans want. They want the Eagles in the link, and they want to be able to cheer for their Eagles and boo the Packers and – Again, all the things that Brian Gutekind's talked about on the podcast of them not being thrilled about going to Brazil, but it's better than having to go to Philadelphia. So, to me, the league is going to do what it has to to try to take whatever steps it can to grow the game internationally because that's become a priority for the National Football League. Three different pieces written this week by guys who either are columnists or cover the Eagles about how Nick Sirianni is, quote, coaching for his job. So I had a question for you because we've talked about it before. If if you had if Howie Roseman was fired by the Eagles at the end of a, at the end of last season, I think we talked about it before. He'd be unemployed for what five ten minutes. Yep. Somebody would get him a job. If Nick Sirianni had been fired, would he have gotten a head coaching job? Uh. Well, I'll just say this. Bill Belichick didn't get one. Pete Carroll didn't get one. Mike Vrabel didn't get one. Yeah, that's what I'm, I mean, that's why that. I'm wondering. If, do you think Sirianni would have been a hot commodity or looked upon outside of this city as a hot commodity? Coming off a year like that, the answer to that would be probably not. Probably, surely not a hot commodity. Would he have gotten interviews? I think he would have. Would he have landed a job? Some of the finest coaches in the game couldn't. Yep. So I would say probably not. Probably not. But you don't know. All it takes is one. And there are coaches that get hired right away. It, it does happen. So I don't know how it would have played out. But all I know is that it was a difficult year for a lot of coaches to get jobs. And show me where he would have displaced one of those coaches. The Chargers were, were set on hiring Jim Harbaugh. The Falcons were Bill Belichick until they shifted gears to Raheem Morris, who was incredibly popular 
in that organization. Um, trying to think of the other coaches who were hired last year, right? Top, Dave Canales in Tampa or Carolina. Could he have gone there? Maybe he would have gotten a look there. That wouldn't surprise me. Um, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, New England was going to be drawed mail all along, so he wouldn't have gotten there. Uh, don't think it would have been Seattle. They, they wanted, like, some new, young, fresh blood. But again, chances are no. Chances are Tennessee went with Brian Callahan, who they were enamored with right away. I could see where Nick would have it seemed like they really fell for Callahan because they were the first team out of the box to hire a coach, and they really liked Callahan an awful lot. We're speaking, um, of, speaking of Adam Schefter on the Comcast yeah. business hotline. Sorry, Shefty. Um, Jamar Chase, I want to ask you about this. You just mentioned your fantasy football draft is uh, coming up. Yeah. Uh, a lot of fantasy football drafts are happening. Uh, how quick yeah. are you to draft Jamar yeah, Chase? Happened. Is he playing? You know, it's funny. I, I've got asked that question a whole bunch, you know, over the last few days. And this is the answer I've given to everybody. Jamar Chase is one of the very best players in all of football. He is outstanding. And if there were no contract issues, he would be a top three or four pick, without question. Slam dunk, top three, top four, lock him in and load him up. But now you're getting that player, but you don't know. What's going to happen with that contract? He may sign an extension today. Today is the Wednesday practice. Players who are not practicing on Wednesday often don't play on Sunday. Um, But I'm not even concerned about Jamar Chase like one week. I like If I were drafting him, I could live without him for one week. That's fine. Guys get hurt and miss a week. Hollywood Brown's going to miss a week at least. So that happens. The larger issue on Jamar Chase if you're drafting him is this. What if he doesn't get a deal done? That's my question. What if he doesn't, and they haven't gotten it done yet? Now, again, he might. He might get it done today. And if you take him in the first round, congratulations, because you got a top four pick at some spot, I'm going to guess between 9 and 12, 9 and 15, somewhere in that range. So that's that's a great value. The risk you take is that if he doesn't get a deal done, and by the way, for the record, I think the Bengals are going to try to get it done. I think he is crazy not to get it done. My guess would be that they figure out a way to get it done, but I will not be surprised if they don't. And if they don't, if they don't, then you've got that issue hanging you over over you all year long to where you don't know when he's going to play. You don't know how much he's going to play. You don't know what's going to happen to him if he's got a sore shoulder or a sore knee and how much he's going to play. You want that with your first pick in fantasy. That's risky, right? And that's why he's falling, I think, you know, outside the top ten right now and where everybody's going to have to make a decision. Like, I was on the phone with somebody last night that took him at 16 in the second round. And, and I think that's like they got to the second round like, you know what, I'm going to roll the dice in Jamar Chase here and the, and the hope it gets done. All right, quickly, are you a better – Amateur NFL general manager or NBA general manager? Well, I've won War Room NBA championships in three of the last five years, and I've yet to win my first NFL War Room title, so I would say NBA for sure. <laughs> there oh, we, well, there, there you go, Mr. There NBA, go. Adam Good Schefter. That's why, yes. that's why we have him on all season that's long, why it is. so we can talk about the Sixers, too. Shefty, we appreciate it, man. Enjoy yourself tomorrow night, week yeah. one, and, of course, Monday night football. Another great – I mean, this is part of the reason why I'm excited, Shefty. The week one schedule is ridiculous, and you get to do Jets Niners to start things off on ESPN. That's great. Yeah, flying out to San Francisco on Sunday – and we'll obviously have Jason Kelsey making his debut on Monday night. On Monday night, and then next week you'll be with next us. Next week we'll be with you, Jason Kelsey in Philadelphia. We look for forward to Eagles. seeing you. Well, who, who do they play? The Eagles versus Falcons. Falcons. The Falcons. Wow, that's it. that's very interesting. Okay, great. I didn't realize that. But uh, Eagles Falcons week two, Jason Kelsey, and uh, we'll have some. We'll have some fun there that night at the link. That'll be great. You're the man, Chef. Do we appreciate Thanks, it as Adam. always?